What's up traders, what's up tycoons? Super excited for today's video. Uh, this is going to be the most important policy announcement that we have coming up this week and could be potentially the most important week we have uh, for the next like three to six months, right? And it's no joke, we have the QRA, we'll break down what that is and what's going on with it. And we've got five of the Magnificent Seven stocks reporting earnings this week. Absolute roller coaster. It's going to be insane. And I hope you guys are prepared. We'll take a look at a few charts. Okay. Not everything. There's so many stocks with earnings this week. It's crazy. So we'll break down Amazon, Microsoft. We'll take a look at Google and SoFi as well. Uh, and we've also got a lot of amazing data that you guys do not want to miss that really will help give you some clarity into the market movements in the market structure. So make sure to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. As always, though, the content provided on this channel is for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to be relied upon as legal, financial or investment advice. So be sure to read through the disclaimer. And if you're new, I actually started a completely free newsletter called uh, Investment Intelligence, giving out free, valuable finance content. And I try to sprinkle in free trade ideas in there as well. And this is what they'll look like, right? Highlighting the chart conditions, showing you guys the actual chart itself. And you can take a look and review the website uh, and see that many of the trade ideas have worked out very, very well. And it's because it's about quality over quantity. So you don't have to worry about me spamming your inbox five to 10 different times every single day, you know, trying to brag about one trade idea that worked, but rather providing you guys with high quality setups. And eventually you guys will start to see, you know, what it is that I'm using to identify high quality setups and potentially be able to identify your own high quality setups in the future. Now, RTX was one of the most recent ones, and you can see people in the Discord mentioning how you know their January call options went up very much, over 88%. They actually went up way higher than that, okay? And um, yeah, it's completely free, so sign up for it. And if you wanna get into the Discord, it's only a dollar right now. Now, promo code JAN24 will get you in for just a dollar, but after that, um, you know, after January is over, that promo code will be expiring, and the price to get into the Discord will also be going up. So. You know, join now while you can. It's just a dollar. Uh, and that's where you get access to all my different analysis, all my different trade ideas. I post over 20 swing trade setups every week in there, as well as many intraday uh, setups for day trades that I'm looking at or things that I'm day trading. OK, now remember, promo Jan 24 will get you guys in for just a dollar. Now, let's start off here talking about the quarterly refunding announcement. It's going to be the most important policy announcement this week. And while there's lots of guesses, unless you've got a tipster or some inside info in the Treasury, you likely have no edge predicting the composition. So wait for it to come out, you know, react, don't predict. OK, and we can see how big of a market mover it's really been. Look at the Q3 QRA, right? So we've got stocks on the top. We've got yields on the bottom. And in Q3, it sent yields absolutely skyrocketing, right? And really was something that started the sell-off in the summer last year in the S&P 500. And then the Q4 QRA sent yields plummeting and sent stocks skyrocketing. So it's most likely going to be a major market mover again. Will it move markets up? Will it move markets down? We won't know, you know, don't predict, rather react to it. And, you know, once it comes out, read about it guys find out the info about it and see you know what happened if it's something that the market's going to like if the markets if it's something the market's not going to like um you know you want to be prepared okay and not caught with your pants down so that's why i'm saying that this is very very important now why has the stock market been raging so much why have we been hitting new all-time highs well pce everyone all right this is something that the fed monitors very much Core inflation is running under 2%. So over the last three months, core PCE has advanced just 1.52% at an annual rate. And over the last six months, core PCE has climbed just 1.86%. Now, a bonus in today's much stronger than expected Q4 GDP report, the inflation, so this is your core PCE deflator, it rose at an annualized rate of 2%. So by this measure, the Fed's 2% inflation target has been achieved for a second quarter in a row. Now, this is some of the stuff that has Wall Street and the market pricing in so many rate cuts this year is because when you look at different instruments and different measurements, you know, a lot of people are saying that inflation has been peaking and that inflation is already at that 2% or lower annualized rate. Now, the labor market's been pretty strong, so there's not much of a reason for them to cut rates necessarily uh, if they think that the labor market's strong. But we're also seeing a little bit of signs that the labor market is weakening a little, right? Not that it's very weak or not that it's super weak, but that it is getting a little bit weaker. 
Now, sticking on the topic of inflation, we can see rent for new tenants fell 5% year over year in December. This is the largest drop on record. Rents was something that was really holding up inflation and keeping inflation high. So, you know, if we take this into fact, you know, the next inflation report, the next CPI report, you know, maybe it's going to be good. We'll have to see. OK, we'll have to see now mortgage demand. Right. So it's kind of staying on the topic of, of housing. Uh, mortgage applications rose by 3.7 percent last week, which pushed the NBA purchase index to its highest level since April of 2023. So we're starting to see, you know, rents coming down and we're starting to see housing activity picking up. Right. And we're seeing these mortgage applications rise. And it's because Treasury yields have fallen a little bit. That's one of the things pushing it up now. Just recently, we've seen the largest weekly inflow to tech funds since August of 2023. Now, <clears throat> what did we look at earlier in the very beginning? We saw that the QRA came in August. And that's also the last time we saw these large amounts of tech uh, inflows. And that's also when there was a bearish QRA. So is that a predictor? As we mentioned, you know, it's, it's not much, you know, worth trying to predict it, but rather just, you know, wait for it to come out and react. OK, um, if we move forward and we look at hedge funds versus tech, but this time excluding the Magnificent Seven, the hedge fund long short exposure to tech is currently at four year lows. It's in the eighth percentile since 2020. Right. And that's what we're looking at right here. So this is all of the stocks minus the Magnificent Seven. And, you know, the Mag Seven has really been what's carrying the market and pushing the market, you know, over the past year. Um, and if we take a look at another chart that kind of just shows why, right? The further you go down the market cap ladder, the worse the performance. Okay. And this is for the year of 2024. So, you know, it's not a huge data set or a very long data set. Um, but it, to me, it's really, really just goes to show, you know, why people are investing the MAG7 and why hedge funds aren't really exposed to other tech, excluding the MAG7. Take a look here. So, the red is going to be the rolling 20 company average, right? And so this is going to be, you know, basically, um, you know, the, yeah, the rolling 20 company average. And then you've got the year to day performance in the bars here. So we see NVIDIA, all right? And when we talk about the left side, this is going to be largest market cap. And then on the right side, this is going to be smallest market cap companies. And you see NVIDIA performing very, very well. You see Pan W performing very, very well. And then you come over here and you take a look at Enphase not performing well at all okay and it just goes down you see that the performance is worse the uh lower you go down in market cap right so the largest market cap companies are performing well and really have a lot to do with the s p 500 and the overall market performance and you're seeing lagging in these smaller market cap companies so maybe that's why hedge funds aren't really exposed to them too much or maybe it's the other way around because hedge funds aren't really exposed to them too much. Maybe that's why they're underperforming so much. So that begs the question, if we see a huge rotation into tech outside of the Magnificent Seven, can that potentially keep the stock market rally going higher? Or is that a warning sign for us? Now, if you look at financial conditions versus liquidity, this is from Cross Border Capital. And I did a video on you know their concept of liquidity and how it works. Um, but essentially what they say is, is, you know, if you see liquidity going up, right. Uh, and you see increases in liquidity, uh, that's going to help things like gold. That's going to help things like Bitcoin. And that's going to help things like stocks. And so their GLI liquidity index leads Goldman Sachs financial conditions by around six months and both points of further easing in monetary conditions. So the Goldman Sachs Financial Conditions Index is going to be inverted. So when it goes down, this actually means that um, financial conditions are tightening. And then whenever it goes up, this means that they're loosening. Um, and, you know, what we can see here with the liquidity uh, index right here is that the liquidity index has been climbing here. And so being that it leads the, uh, gold, the financial conditions index by about six months, it's basically a bullish signal for Bitcoin, gold and equities over the next six months is what they're suggesting here. Right now, if you look at post all time high performance, it's actually very well. OK, the median uh, or the average one month return is 0.2 percent. So nothing spectacular. The average three month return is one point four percent and the average six month return is three point seven percent and average 12 month return is seven point four percent. 
So, you know, at the, uh, you know, basically it's not spectacular, but it's sure isn't bearish either, right? This is a good quote right here. And, you know, that's what we're looking at essentially is, you know, hey, we may not have the most bullish year ever, right? Especially after such an amazing bullish year last year. The NASDAQ 100 actually had one of its top five performing years ever in the history of the NASDAQ last year. And you really wouldn't know it by talking to a lot of people because so many people were frustrated last year. Uh, and so many people thought that the market was going to crash and weren't a participant in the market or even perhaps shorting the market and really, really frustrated over the uh, performance. Now, we'll talk about some of these earnings. OK, we've got Amazon coming up very soon. Um, you know, this has been a great play right here, guys. Very textbook. We had the cup and handle formation here. We broke out of the handle neckline of the cup neckline, retested it right over here, right along that 10 week moving average and then continued to head up higher. Originally, the target for Amazon was going to be around 164 uh, for the first target of this cup and handle breakout. And we're very close to there. OK, we got very close here recently um, and we may perhaps see a little bit of a pre earnings rally. But, you know, if this thing skyrockets off earnings, I wouldn't be surprised if it goes up to 173. And, you know, if it tanks, quote unquote, on earnings, you know, 146.50 is going to be a very key level, right? That was the prior breakout level of the cup and handle. And those are going to be really the two areas that, you know, Amazon could potentially go on a very big move on earnings. Microsoft, another one with a cup and handle here, uh, never even gave us a retest, right? Just broke out, pulled back a little bit, testing an old supply zone as demand, uh, had a nice little triangle pattern squeezing here. It's absolutely skyrocketing. 420 to about 435 uh, is the upside in Google, or, or in Microsoft rather that I've been watching. Uh, and if this was to, you know, uh, have a bad reaction to earnings. You know, 366 is a potential area where this thing could come down to also about 350. OK, so those are going to be some of the key levels to watch out for. All of these charts are screaming bullish, um, but, you know, that doesn't necessarily technicals necessarily don't really play into uh, earnings. Right. And what an earnings reaction is going to be. Uh, but, you know, if you just look at these they're definitely bullish, right? Just just, just looking at them at a glance. We've got Google here, another one, cup and handle, breakout. Uh, you know, this one hit the 147 price target here. And if this thing continues to rise, 158.87 is going to be the next upside target. Uh, it's not very far away from there right now. And if this thing starts to break down, you wanna look at 139.79, let's just call it 140. Uh, that was a big prior resistance area. You know, if it has a significant drop, you know, um, you know, I'd look to see if it could potentially hold that area. Uh, and if it doesn't, you know, it could mean further rolling over to happen. Uh, SoFi is one that I usually like to play on earnings. Uh, completely forgot that their earnings is going to be Monday uh, before market open. So I wasn't able to get an earnings position. Uh, this one usually uh, moves double digits. It's not very it's not often or it's it, rather it's often that, uh, you know, this stock will move double digits. Will it be up or down 10 percent or more? I, you know, I can't predict for you guys. Uh, the upside target of about 10 percent here is around 846. I've got a level there. And then the downside target uh, for 10 percent, you know, basically to the downside is also this key demand zone that we established over here. Uh, and that's going to be just under seven dollars, right around six, six something. What's also interesting is it's dancing in between two gaps. There's a gap down of 547 and then there's a gap up here. to about 950 as well. Uh, and it's basically right in the middle point of those. So it's going to be really interesting to see you know, what happens with SoFi uh, and what numbers come out. I'm pretty excited for it. Let me know what stocks you guys are most excited for earnings this week. Let me know if you're playing any earnings, whether it's long or short. Uh, I'd love to hear what you guys are up to out in the markets. Now, don't forget to sign up for the Discord, okay? Remember, that's where you get all the analysis and all the trade ideas rather than just one or two a week from the newsletter. You can get in using promo code JAN24. You know, DraftKings is a really good example of one of the, uh, you know, uh, trade ideas from the Discord. We talked about how in the monthly time frame, every, every February uh, has been green. It's got a 100% win rate in the month of February. And then we highlighted the falling wedge back on January 13th. I had a very clean ABCDE structure uh, for that falling wedge. The E wave was also around 50% of uh, retracement from wave C to D. Uh, that is, you know, very textbook. It doesn't get any more textbook than that. 
and the stock ran up over 21% into a previous overhead supply. Uh, huge, huge gains there, especially if you trade something like options. Remember that was, uh, you know, that analysis was posted in the Discord for you guys. Now, remember, Jan24 will get you in for just a dollar right now, but that promo code ends, all right? It's ending at the end of January as a way to just, you know, kick off uh, the new year. So let's start the new year off strong with you guys and, you know, basically try to let you guys get in for free. Uh, you know, the, the cheapest price available, actually, you know, of a dollar. Uh, if you don't want to sign up for the Discord, remember, the newsletter is completely free itself. And in there, you'll get about one, maybe two trade ideas a week completely for free, as well as some free, valuable finance and trading content. Um, I know you guys will enjoy either one of them. Uh, hopefully you sign up for both and I'll see you in the next video.